the cable to control your speedo. Hello people of the internet. Today I'm going to start reassembling the bug. If you are new and you want to know what that bug is, this is Ragnar, which I am going to be giving away to one of you once I am done restoring it. In the video description down below is where you can go to enter your chance to win the car. And up above my head is a link to not the last video where I worked on it, rather a delicious recipe for radish and goat milk popsicles. <laughs> do do do! Begin! Oh. I don't know which side goes where. I'm wondering if I should use some rubber butyl adhesive with this. I don't know, I don't think I need adhesive. It goes in there pretty hard. Maybe just in the corners I'll put a little bit of butyl. Ah, the stripping changes right here. Oh, I get it. This is a two-person job. You need to get an assistant. Uh, which side, this side? All right, after like 30 minutes of screwing with the adjustment, when this is closed, I think that'll be perfect. Body lines are lined up. This, I'm 100% gonna have to put some butyl adhesive on the back side of this rubber molding for it to stay in properly. I just wanted to get them on the car so they're not at risk of falling over leaned up against the wall. And now they are. And I can fine tune them in a little bit once I get some butyl adhesive. I don't have any right now. These look like licorice that will give you a stomach ache. Okay, so this should start well, probably right down here. I guess I can always leave a little excess. This doesn't come with holes, so I gotta make my own. So it looks like I don't have to make perfect circles. I just gotta make little Pac-Man heads. I'll trim it right. I'll give it a little extra. Now I gotta mark some holes. That piece is ready. That guy. I have this thing wedged between my tit, my knee, and my elbows in the car. I can't flex it with one hand and tighten this with the other. This is hard. Ah. Me, I'm starting to look like a car again. There, it should be enough to be able to do this. I probably could have taped off the car to do this, but I are careful. Center bolt. Oh, what the hell? There's tape over the hole. It was just a tiny piece of tape. I didn't even notice that. Wait, I can just do it from the back side. That's what he said. Fucking thread. Oh, this one's gonna suck. Come on. Got it. Now this side. Get it balanced on the tire again. Just like that. If you're wondering what my plan is for doing the rubber undercoating underneath these fenders, I'm gonna do them with it mounted on the car uh, on the lift. I just think that that's probably the best way to go about doing this. So that way I can make sure I get up in the seam and stuff between the car. Yeah. Careful. Plenty of room to get the rubber in here. Now that I got all those freshly painted parts up off the floor, it's time to do wiring. You didn't actually think I was gonna leave all that old janky electrical stuff on this car, did you? So all that spaghetti nightmare mess is getting replaced with a correct harness. All the wire colors match, the lengths are correct, the terminals are all correct. It was the more expensive wiring harness for this car, but that's something you don't cut corners or screw around with, is wiring, because that will just make your life hell. Open this up and see what I got inside here. Oh, this is extensive tech data. So it has verbal instructions, which is good, and then schematics and diagrams with all the colors on there. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Smells like fresh, ooh, there's wire in there. It smells like a fresh shower curtain. It's actually not that bad. I mean, compared to like modern vehicles, this is hardly nothing. This is, it'd be super easy to do. So I just gotta start basically back here by the voltage regulator. What is, oh, this is speaker wiring. Speaker wire, it's 
out. I feel like this could be mounted better too. The wire routing is what really gets me. It's just a mess. I need to straighten this all up. Oh, great. I really wanted to drop that. Is that a self-tapping screw? There's gotta be a better location. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's factory. Real question is, where does this go? That's interesting. I'm gonna have to do some fishing to get this wire harness out. It goes inside the abyss for a few feet before coming back to the engine. <laughs> Look out. Well, that was, I didn't disconnect that. That was just disconnected on its own. Hmm. Flathead screwdriver in like a eight mil. So weird seeing flat head screws is common hardware. Uh, wow, that just falls out of there, huh? Okay. In the drain. This is the engine harness. It's like four wires. Are you kidding me? Oh, there's another one in the back side of the carburetor. That's it. That's ridiculous. I can't get over how simple this is. Taillight harness. This looks like a jar of jelly. <laughs> this hardware for this bracket literally sticks out that far into the inside of the car. And it's a self-tapper. I bet you can still, yep, see it? It's still protruding from back here. Absolutely not necessary. Now I have ample access to this little wire cavity. And of course I gotta clean inside here. Oh geez. If it wasn't for having to reroute the stuff back to the same hole. This hole is so tight. Wait, why am I trying to save old speaker wire? What is wrong with me? Snip. Come out old stupid wiring. So what makes most sense in my head now is to undo the stuff up here and then pull it out the ass. <laughs> pull it out your ass. <laughs> of the car. This piece right here is the same harness that goes back to the engine. The robot snake. Oh, it all mainly just goes to the tachometer. Oh yeah, I forgot. It was me that put the zip ties in there so it wouldn't get stuck to the bed liner. Tube. This stuff is so knotted. Just pull this thing out of the dash. It's the defrost vents. See this right here? This is why I'm changing the harness. This is a problem waiting to happen and I don't want whoever wins this car to have to deal with this kind of crap because electrical stuff, for me, it may be easy, but that's because my background is in aerospace. I went to school for this stuff. I did this professionally for a living in the military, working on wiring harnesses much more complex than the 69 Beetles. But for a lot of enthusiasts and some auto mechanics out there, most people hate electrical stuff. I'm just weird and I enjoy it. That's the whole harness. That goes to the engine. I can't even think about wires. All I can think about is food. I'm so hungry. Yay! Come out. Oh, geez. Hello. Welcome to the following day. I have an ant on my leg. And there's your sneak peek on the next car I have to review. And fun fact, a Subaru WRX was the very first brand new car I ever purchased. It was a 2005 Blabai WRX. I think I was 19, I think when I bought it. I thought about this last night and the best plan of attack is to just rip out all of the old wiring, completely every last bit of it. your speedo. Ta-da! Speedometer. Personally, I feel this is the right way to do it when you have adequate tech data to ensure the car is wired correctly because trying to put new wire harnesses on when you have old shit in the way just makes for a mess. And this way I'll be able to route everything nice and clean once it's all out of the way. There. There is the main terminal board and fuse block of the car.
Wiper motor. Ah, wire out. You're probably asking yourself, how come I didn't do this when I did the lower part down here? Well, how does a posi track rear end work in a 73 Plymouth? It just does. There. Much better. This, I definitely need to clean up the terminals before I put it back. I have to be careful for the rest of this build on this car because I have a deadline I have to finish this by and I'm doing 95% of the work on this car by myself. So I can't keep going down rabbit holes like this or else I won't finish it. Maybe one day I'll be able to afford a team of people to help out with building these cars and a budget that will allow me to do what I really want to do with them. Especially the people helping out part. It's awesome when I can pay Angel to come over here and help out, but I don't make enough money to afford to pay a full salary to have employees helping me build cars. Maybe in another lifetime. Make sure I scrub the backside. Ooh, geez, that was bad. Backside. Look at all that shit in there. Man, how are any of those fuses making contact? The stuff was... That is all gray black paint, the previous color of this car. They literally painted right over the fuse block. That's so dumb. Fuses. This is gonna drive me insane. I cleaned the outside of the lens, but the inside of it has just schmutt on it. And it's sealed. You would have to destroy the cluster to take the lens out. Huh? Yeah? got a little custom anti-vibration seal that goes between it and the dash. I will replace that with a new one because I'm not a savage. There, brand new adhesive foam around the bezel. This actually turned out pretty good. I just wiped it off with some reducer from the paint booth. This little relay box is covered in gray overspray from the previous paint job that was on this car. Just gonna use a little bit of reducer to get the overspray off. This is a pretty good solution that Fred taught me a while back. Yeah, it wipes right off. It's amazing. And that overspray is probably like, who knows, 20 years old. And it doesn't hurt the plastic either. This is where this relay was mounted. I don't know if this is the factory location or not for it, but. The zinc still looks good on this wiper motor. And these arms though, I think I'm gonna repaint. So back to what I was doing last night with pulling the wiring out of the back of the car. I have to take this rear firewall material out. It's like a tar paper, pretty much, because there's some wiring that goes from right here in this cluster and comes out right down here. There's only one problem though. I have to wash that WRX that I'm going to review tomorrow because it rained and it's covered in crud right now. And on top of that, the video that you're watching right now, I have to have edited before tonight on top of having to wash the car and prep it and do all my notes for the car review. Aw oh, man, I think it might rain soon. First, I just feel like it's unprofessional if I review a car and it's all covered in big nasty water spots because they drop these cars off clean to me. I just, I don't know, I feel weird about that. And I gotta wash this thing too because now it's dirty. Wash the car. clean. Now you guys will have to wait a couple weeks till you see the review of it. Once I'm done reviewing this guy right here, I'll get back to work on Ragnar. Hopefully I should be able to do all the wiring in one video. I should, maybe, hopefully. 
if everything goes all right and then I can start really putting the car together and installing the interior and stuff and then tackle the engine and suspension which I have suspension parts sitting over there on that shelf which has kind of turned into an abyss of boxes I don't have time to organize okay I barely have time to think I still gotta wash pokey that's a weird sounding sentence anyway thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon with another video.